Welcome back to video two of this series of this very large house build for tabletop gaming. Uh, jumping right into it, if you didn't watch the first video, please check that out on my channel. Uh, I did the second floor, much like I did the first floor, so there is really nothing new to show here. But the next step was to just jump right into building the roof after I got that second floor finished. I started out by cutting out the end pieces to kind of get like the shaping of the overall roof and its profile. Once I got all these roof profiles kind of cut out and everything, I started to cut out panels for each side of the pitch. I cut this out of foam core that I got from the dollar store and I measured out the width uh, of the actual slope that was going to be going down on each side and then I cut it a little bit longer to allow it for a slight overhang. The next thing I did was measure the length of each roof panel and again allowed for a, about a half inch overhang on each side. This really actually gives it a lot of character. I really enjoy the look that I ended up with so highly recommend considering uh, design in real life and then incorporating it or making it a little bit more whimsical in your designs. So after I got these all cut it was time to attach them to the actual roof profile pitches that I had made. Now this foam core was supposed to be the type of foam core that you can actually peel that outer layer of paper off of and as you can see it didn't really peel that well. So then I applied the beta hot glue on it, again allowing for the half inch overhang on the piece, and I pressed the panel into the curvature of that kind of roof profile there, and then I reinforced it with a bead of hot glue on the back side. This attachment worked really, really well, and they felt super solid once I got both sides on too. So after this, again, I found out that I could actually just bend the foam core without peeling the paper off and still achieve uh, the shaping that I was going for. This wouldn't matter in the end because those creases would be covered up by some roof shingles. So once that was all done, I did the same thing with the other roof and got them all nice and situated and then started to figure out how they were going to fit on the roof. Uh, because of the overhangs that I allowed, uh, they would not actually sit center on each piece that they needed to so a little bit of cutting was going to be involved to help them kind of overlap each other uh, i think a lot of this could be avoided with a little bit more thought and care going into the overall design i being an experience with building structures like this uh, just could not foresee that happening but uh, i was able to solve for it and ad make adjustments as i needed to make them kind of connect well with each other so yeah, just continuing to cut this down and trim it down until I could really kind of get it to fit how I needed it to before I started to attach it. Um, the way I did that was by using magnets. And I, I learned this from Tabletop Witchcraft on his channel. And this works really well. So what I do is I just kind of get the magnets in place and then I take the piece I'm gonna attach to it and then I press it down on the magnets. And they actually leave an imprint in the foam on the bottom part and the top part and where you're going to be actually attaching those magnets. I cut them out, cut out the circles with a little X-Acto knife and then kind of pop them out with a clay sculpting tool uh, recommended by Tabletop Witchcraft and uh, it really just kind of pops them out like little corks. It works really, really well. So when I inserted the magnets, I'd actually take, it's not depicted here, but I'd take just like a barbecue skewer and kind of press them in so they just recess just slightly maybe a millimeter, half a millimeter in, um, just so you can get a nice little blob of hot glue in there and then make sure it finishes smooth. And that, that's enough to hold it in, so. But yeah, looks really good, everything attaches. And you can see me kind of attach the second floor on top of the first floor. All the roof pieces are attached. Uh, and then it was on to working on the tower and constructing it vertically. Again, some. A little bit more extra planning here and sketching things out might have been able to prevent a lot of extra cutting of the roof just to fit pieces in uh, but it just ended up working out and you just kind of deal with what you got it was then time to start working on the shingles of the roof and this technique is a really great technique to get some really detailed looking uh, like cedar type shake shingles I learned this technique, I believe, from Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft. Go check out his YouTube channel if you haven't already. He makes really amazing stuff, 
and has some really great techniques. But it kind of looks like a, a sound wave or a heartbeat pattern that you cut into them. And then flip it on its side and then start cutting a bunch of thin sheets of this, of this profile of shingles. And then you'll take that and then start placing it on your piece. I glue it on with hot glue and then each time that I put a piece on, I get a different piece that doesn't have the exact same kind of like profile. And then I stagger it a little bit to make sure that the flat side of the shingle will overlap the grooves there. Almost like brickwork, how they over, over the lines kind of stagger. So do that and then put on a good podcast and or some music and then just go to town. see that I ran those shingles really high up the roof and then from there you just want to trim off any overhang that you you may have with a nice sharp blade uh, I use the Ulfa knife it works incredibly well not all razor blades are created the same and the Ulfa knife is on the top end of that for sure right here I put on a mask and started using the wire brush to create the wood texture this turned out really well I'd highly recommend wearing a mask because when you do this, a bunch of little dust particles from the foam go into the air. I actually took the other pieces outside and did them out there while wearing a mask. A little bit more trim work to do here. And then also, honestly, there was a little bit more finagling that went on just to make them fit properly again, because I got some new thicknesses with adding on more material. And then I started working on the tower piece. This took a lot of finagling and you'll see that I kind of play with it quite a bit. Again, time to revisit that previous statement of if I had drawn this out a little bit better and kind of had a really clear idea of what I was building the entire for the entire project, I could have avoided a lot of this weird uh, trimming and cutting and just kind of making things just work. Uh, but you know, some people don't work that way, and I work kind of that way. So I had an idea in mind, and then I went with it, and then kind of changed my mind, you know, mid-project. So. It required a little bit of finagling, a little bit of trimming uh, over and over again just to make things fit properly. But yeah, that's the end of this episode. So please like and subscribe if you, if you enjoyed this. Uh, and then stay tuned for the next video where we start to get into more of the exterior trim work. And thanks for watching.